You got a new running back coach. If you're going to get a running back coach, Kevin, I would think going to Wisconsin for one would be a great place to go. Yeah, um, this one kind of came out of because you and I talked last Wednesday, and then literally like the next day, the story story broke. Um, the um, the I started to say the Reds. Sorry, I got my sports confused here. It's spring training. Um, Kentucky, you know, Eddie Grand, who had been the offensive coordinator and running backs coach, was let go at the end of last year. They hired Jamal um, Singleton from the, um, the who had been with the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, there was a lot of excitement about him coming in. And he lasted a month and he got – um, hired a job with Philadelphia Eagles, I believe it was. But anyway, he he came from the NFL, came to Lexington for like a month. Um, every you know, by all accounts, everybody thought he was you know, everybody loved him, thought he was great, and then all of a sudden he's gone again. So, Coach Stoops, they um, got John Settle, who's been the running backs coach at Wisconsin, I think, for about the last the last ten years. Did you and, say uh, John you know, Settle? Yes. What was that? The name John Settle, former Atlanta Falcon. Yes. Okay. Yeah, John Settle. Man. Yeah, he's the new, name in a long time. Yeah, he's the the new. Uh, I I assume that that's the same. Yeah, the the same the same guy. He um, and like I said that he came. He's leaving Wisconsin and, and coming down here, and just you know got here within the last obviously the last few days. We're now in the second day of spring practice. We just finished the second day of spring practice, and so you think about um, what Wisconsin has done. You know, over the last decade or more with all the guys they put in the NFL, all the great running backs. Um, and now you take that and you, you put him at Kentucky and you think about what Kentucky's done over the last seven or eight years as far as the running game goes. You know, on paper, it seems like the perfect, you know, the perfect match. So where you have Chris Rodriguez and Cavassier Smoke, Juton McLean, Travis Tisdale, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb you know, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a call when we get in closer to the summer. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to say Chris Rodriguez leads the SEC in rushing this year. So that's that, that's my uh, that's my March 16th, 17th, whatever today is hot take. So, but I'm, I'm going to say other pack taking uh, carries away from him. Now that is a possibility that you know with smoke. I think we'll probably see a lot of playing time. You know, when Eddie Graham was here, they had the tendency to just go with whoever was whoever had the hot hand that day. You know, like if one like if Rodriguez was struggling, which he very rarely struggles, but you know if he was getting stopped or he was you know not. You know, he missed a couple of games obviously last year because of COVID related issues, but. Um, and that is a possibility, but when you're averaging like six, seven yards a carry, like like he does, you know, you run, say you run the ball 15 times, you run average seven yards a carry, you got over 100 yards. But like I said that that's going to be my my, uh, my my hot take. We we can you can mark that one down, and um, I'll say he leads the league in um, in rushing this year. But um, but yeah, I mean everybody's just really really excited um, going on. Keeping with the NFL theme, Stoops brought in Liam Cohen. We've we've talked about this before. As the new offensive coordinator, he was quarterback's coach with the Rams. And as I said, through the first two days of practice, everybody's just like, you know, this is this is really cool. It's like a whole new, you know, a whole new experience um, learning this new offense. And obviously, it's like it's only been two days, but there's just a lot of. Um, I think excitement, I've used that word a lot when we've talked, but there's just an excitement around this program. And I think with some of the changes that, that Stoops has brought in, he's kind of modernized it, I guess, a little bit. Now, Stoops is an old school, we all know Stoops is an old school smash mouth football guy. And and Coach Settle even said that in his press conference. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy, you know, I just soon run over you. You know, I like guys who can do that. And obviously – you know, he, he's a big fan of, of Rodriguez. He mentioned him specifically. Um, but as I said, they're, like I said, it's very um, – the excitement around this, this program is, is really, really high right now. And as we talked last time, the fact that you throw in a historically bad season for Kentucky basketball and, you know, that excitement level is, is even higher. It's, it's unfortunate that, you know, UK is not going to have a spring game this year because of um, – they use Kroger Field as a it's a COVID testing and um, vaccination site, and they didn't want to disrupt any of that, so they they elected to not have a game 
again this year. So um, we obviously we didn't have one last year because of, you know, we were just in the beginnings of this, you know, of this pandemic. So, you know, there won't be a spring game. So we won't really see what these guys, you know, have been up to or what they're doing until we get to September, September 4th when we, when Kentucky, you know, plays Louisiana Monroe. Kevin McGuffey on the line from last word on college football to break down. Uh, Kevin McGuffey and company, I hear. Do I? I you had some company with you, right? Oh, oh, yeah. It was. I had some something um, thing pop up on my computer. Now everybody's uh, the oh, kids are the kids. The kids are all upstairs, and unless I heard, I didn't hear it. But anyway, I thought um, we had a dog running around the house or something. Oh uh, well, Tippy might be running around here somewhere. Our little uh, our, our Shishan that we have, but um, it's it's a possibility. So, but uh, but yeah, like I said, two two days into spring practice, and everybody's uh, like I said, excitement and um, just you know, I re- I really think this could be a big a big year for for Kentucky, and we'll see you know we'll see what happens once we get there. So when I look at the offense, Kevin, you lost uh, two offensive line starters, but the offensive line is still supposed to be in good shape, even though they were two very productive players up front. I look across the defense and the offense, and I I see uh, productivity. I see good recruiting. I'm I'm concerned about quarterback wide receivers. Are Are those the two biggest question marks? on this team? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The quarter, quarterback is that that's going to be obviously um, the, the last post that I had for last word. Um, it was talking about the spring white matchups in the spring. And, you know, the quarterback is going to be the main thing. Um, you have Terry Wilson who, you know, had been here for three years, done, done a lot of, a, a lot of great things. I don't think got the, um, I don't think he got the credit or, um, the uh, or you know that he deserved but um yeah so he he announced that he was going to transfer still as of yet to an unnamed an unnamed school so yeah you have the the, the good old-fashioned quarterback uh quarterback not necessarily controversy but a quarter you know quarterback uh, competition you have joey gatewood who's the former you know highly touted all-american high school player out of all um who went to auburn transferred from auburn to kentucky and then you have bo allen who's a um product from here in, in Lexington from Lexington Catholic. And, um, you know, there, I, I think my opinion Stoops seems to tend to lean towards the guys who've been here longer, which slightly that would be Gatewood. I say Gatewood might have a, an, an edge, but there are also a lot of people who think that uh, Allen could end up being the guy just because he might fit in that pro style offense that coach Cohen is wanting to install. And then, you have those two, and then you get to the the summer. You have Will Levis, who's uh, who just transferred from Penn State to Kentucky. He won't be here until till the summer, so we may go through this whole quarterback con- you know competition again. But um, but the, you know that's probably on, on the offensive side of the ball. That that's the biggest you know, that's the biggest um, the biggest thing that we're that people are going to are going to be looking for and as far as the offensive line. I mean, the offensive line is still even losing Drake Jackson, even losing Landon Young. Um, you're going to have Darian Kennard, who's going to slide over from more than likely from right tackle to left tackle. Um, you've got um, Quentin Wilson, who's probably going to take over, who, who has has gotten playing time. Who's going to take over for Drake Jackson's spot? And then the, the biggest thing is just that right tackle. Who's going to play the other tackle? But you know, Kentucky is has been has been just really hitting it hard with um, you know with recruiting. You've got you've got DeAndre Buford, you got Jeremy Flax, Nasir Watkins, John Young, and then you've got a very talented freshman Jack Burton who could be um, you know be in the mix as well. But um, as you said, on the on the other side of the ball, um, the linebacker position is probably the biggest. It's probably the biggest question mark because they lost Boogie Watson, they lost Jamin Davis. You know, if you look at some of the um, the current um, mock drafts, they're um, they um, you know they have Davis going possibly late first round now. So um, you know, one of the guys, DeAndre Square, is going to be a guy who's going to who's already you know done great things with the Cats. He might move from outside the middle linebacker. Um, you got Jared Casey, who's former four-star recruit out of Louisville. 
he um, originally committed to Oregon and they, they, they got him to flip. And then um, another guy that I'm really high on that we've talked about is, is Trevin Wallace, a uh, four-star player out of, um, out of Georgia who Kentucky, who Kentucky got in the December signing period. So I know it's a lot of, Gavin Wimstead. Um, everybody, you know, I, I was on here the other day. The last time I was on, I said I thought it was 80% that he comes to Kentucky. So I'm going to stick to that, even though I did see a recruiting uh, one of the crystal balls that came out the other day that had him going to Rutgers. So I don't know. Um, like I said, Stoops and, and Vince Marrow and those guys have made recruiting in Kentucky a priority. I, I think I said, I, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going to say I'm just being bold tonight. I say Chris Rodriguez is going to lead the SEC in rushing, and I'll say Slimsack comes to Kentucky. So, and we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see we'll see if I'm right on either one of those. <laughs> Kevin, we're looking for views, we're looking for clicks, we're looking for viral videos. So anytime you want to come on here with a bold take, you're you're welcome. Come on here and make it happen. Absolutely. Okay, will do. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, two predictions here from the uh, 247 Sports folks, including Steve Wiltfong, who's one of their high-level guys. Two predictions for Rutgers. For, um, that, that just seems like an odd combination there must be some kind of connection with the coaching staff or the position coach yeah i'm, yeah, I'm not sure what the um i'm honestly not sure what, what the connection is with that i'll have to do some research for the next time you know the next time i'm on because obviously this is going to be a big you know especially with kentucky fans i think it's going to be a big topic you know for the next the next year or so till we find out what what he what he wants to do um but um they are putting on the full court press for him but um like I said, I, and I think they end up. I still think I still think he ends up coming here. But we'll, as I said, we I have been wrong occasionally, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. So, what they probably should do is just show the young man records record over the last uh, four seasons. Just show him the the football record and say, "Do you want to really get involved with this?" And number two, show him uh, pictures of the football stadium with uh, no fans. Now I'm talking prior to 2020, of course, but uh, with few right. stand, fans in the stands, uh, do you really want to play in front of nobody in Piscataway, New Jersey is what they might want to do. Right. Uh, right. Anytime if Kentucky yeah. wants some recruiting tips from me, that's what I have to offer. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a very good point. Like I said, you can come, you know, go somewhere. And, and as we, we have talked before, um, Kentucky has done really well, you know, in, in the years before Stoops was here, you had a lot of a lot of the guys from out of state or in state would go, you know, would barely even give Kentucky a look. And then some of the best players, you know, wouldn't end up going to Louisville even. But like I said, they, they have made that home state a priority. And I, I think, and like I said, I think they're going to put the full court press. Any, you know, any any th football related thing you want to use, um, you know, I, I, to to try to get to try to get him here because I I think he could be, you know, two years two years maybe three years down the road he could be your you know be your guy and be you know an all SEC you know an all SEC um, qu um an all SEC kind of, kind of player. So, but. Um, the Rod Farva makes a good point here. While the Kentucky strategy would be to show the Rutgers football record and uh, the, the stadium capacity versus the attendance, the Rutgers strategy would be, yes, Kentucky's been a bit um, meager on the offensive side. I saw a stat as I was prepping for your appearance that uh, under Mark Stoops, Kentucky has not finished higher than ninth in the SEC in scoring. Yeah. No, that that's it makes a very that makes a very good point. And I think um I think a lot of it is gonna happen. Um we'll see what happens with, with the new offense. Um, you know, because as we said with, with with Eddie Grand, you know, those guys, you know, they were run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, you know, and then two years ago we had Kentucky had, you know, lost Terry Wilson, lost Sawyer Smith, had to take um, you know, Lynn Bowden. It was, you know, the former high school quarterback and put him back under center and basically, you know, ran left, ran right, ran up the middle. But um, then also talking about the the offense, you have um, – they have, um, as far as receivers, you, you have to throw in Wondell Robinson, um, transfer from Nebraska. 
another person like through the first couple of days of practice who's just been turning heads as expected. You know, I, I think you, you have somebody like him, like Wimsett, you see the offense, you see them, you know, that more pro style, trying to throw the ball, throw the ball, probably see a lot of play action, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's like to, to his point, he, he's absolutely correct that, yeah, Kentucky's offense, you know, ha, has struggled um, as far as throwing the ball. But then you, you have that big blue wall, you know, that we like to call it here, and you just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. You know, you had Benny Snell, then you had, you know, A.J. Rose, you had, you know, Boom Williams before that. You know, Kentucky had, had five straight years of 1,000 yard rushers before this year. And um, which, honestly, if they played, you know, and Rodriguez played an entire season. I think he would have gotten to a thousand yards. But yeah, I, I think you have to see. Um, um, I, to my knowledge, I think I think he is. If it's if it's not um, if it's not Mero, it may be um, John Sumrall or um, you know one of those guys. Sumrall's been really instrumental on the offensive side. Um, I will have to check that one. I honestly don't have. I honestly don't have that answer for you right now. I apologize for that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Mero, like I said, Vince Mero, Steve Klingscale, uh, John Summerall, all those guys have been really, really, you know, those three guys have been doing a bulk of their recruiting, you know, for, for UK as far as, you know, as far as that goes. But um, like I said, I, I think we, we get to September, you see the offense. I think you're going to see an entirely different, you know, more of a balance at least. You know that seventy thirty run. You know you may see more. I still think they're going to lean towards to, towards the run just because of the guys that they have. But you have so many. I think they're going. To, you know, like having Robinson is just. You know, he's that home run threat that Kentucky really hasn't had. I mean, you say with the thing with thing with Bowden, but then you have with Robinson. Then you have Josh Ali on the other side of the ball, who had been Kentucky's leading receiver the last two years. And now everybody's going to pay attention to Robinson, and then that's going to open it up for him. And so, like I said, I, I just I'm really excited. You know, like I said, it's only March. You know, be nice to get to September and see what happens. So. 